and Shmuel chapter 6 verse 20 and it says Vayomru Anshe Beit Shemesh the men of Beit Shemesh said Miyu Chala Amol Defnei Hashem Lokim who can stand before Hashem HaKadosh Ha this Vi'el Mi Ale Me Alein and who will go up from us so again who will stand before uh, the Lord this holy God so what does that mean it's a strange con uh, construction so in the English they say they put the words the ark of so they translate the word as who will be able to stand before the ark of the Lord this holy oh, God that's oh. how they do it in the English uh, oh so they put in some words right so that in other words, apparently there must be some commentary indicating that that's what they're really talking about correct. standing before because the arrow is what they had but they were returning right so the masseuse yeah. david is one who says it he says miyu khalamot uh roach them more where is it yeah hello gadolim uh shabbat made to me who are who are the ones who have died who was one that remains i can stand before uh, the Aaron of Hashem. There you go. That's the Aaron of Hashem to guard it and to uh, safeguard its holiness. So the Masuz David is throwing the words before the Ark. Okay. And you also have. Oops, sorry. Like I was saying, uh, who will be able to stand before Hashem? Uh, I, I, it seems like they're looking at the ironness well that's really that's the focal point for Hashem perhaps yeah. and maybe that's what right. they're saying yeah so and then the um the Malbim says Amiu Chalamod Rasulimod and Yistavkum there was a question Im Sibad HaNegev Haya Bavo Rov Kedushat Harom whether or not the uh the the reason for the plague was because of the the majority of the Kedusha, the sanctity of the ark, which required that anybody that approaches it, you kedoshim, would be holy. And they did not think to find themselves properly. And that's what they said. Who can stand before Hashem, this this holy one? As yeah. uh, oh, MC oh, Negev, or was the reason for this plague Bavor Hamakom? Because of the place, she'enu chafes l'shchon b'makom hazem. There was Hashem in the in the in the play for the sake of the Hashem that did not desire to dwell in this place. Rach makom acher hamuchan l'ashvat shchina. Only another place in which was the divine shchina was prepared to was a place was prepared for it to dwell there. V'al zemem are and. Because this is al mi al elen, so who will bring it up from a, from amongst us? Okay, so people had died there, and that's remember the people of Anshe Beit Shemesh. They saw it, it goes back to what was going on. They saw the ark, and and they saw seven people hit, which was fifty thousand men. We had the whole question: was it is it fifty seven thousand men, or is it fifty? 70 men were equal, equal to 50,000 men, that whole question that went on. And so now they're saying, okay, so we have a question as to what the holiness of, is it the holiness based upon the Kedusha of the Ark, or the is it the Kedusha, or is it that Hashem doesn't, needs a place that would be prepared for him. So that, and then who's going to bring him to that place? So, so they sent messengers uh, well, messengers were sent. No, they sent messengers. It should be they sent messengers. Where is it? Yeah. Okay. El Yoshve Kiryat Me Arim Lemo to the inhabitants of this place called Kiryat Arim, saying, Hey, Shivu Polishim et Aron Hashem, the Polishim have returned. The Ark of Hashem Redu, Ha'alu Oto Aleichem. Come down. And bring it up to you. <laughs> They're telling somebody else, bring it up. Okay, so 
It said, Malvin explains, Yishuku el Yosh, Malachim el Kirit Yarim. So they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kirit Yarim. Hine Beit Shemesh Azot, Hayatib Yehuda. Beit Shemesh was in the landmass of Yehuda. He, he, Hayoshev al Gavul ha Karov Lekron, which was situated by the border close to Ekron. Lo came Beit Shemesh Yisachar, which is not the case of Beit Shemesh, which belonged to the tribe of Yisachar. V'chein kirit Yarim, he the Yehuda, v'gvul shabain Yehuda levin Yamin, and kirit Yarim was also in the uh, the province of Yehuda, which was at the border between Yehuda and Binyamin. V'chein shalchu lehem liyoto karov lehem. So therefore, they sent it to them. That would be close to them, umechalek shivtam, and still in their their portion of their shevet. Ulaval yitra e the kavu karov the erz plishim, and they did not they did not fear to fix in a place that would be close to the plishim ki kachu meitam, because uh, it was taken from them uh, that that it would be taken from them a second time. Right, if you're going to put it back to the police, so maybe they would want to grab it. He says, No, the police already sent that back to us, they already returned it. They did return on their own because the fear had fallen upon them. And therefore, we don't have to worry about them trying to get it a second time. Therefore, go down and get it and bring it to yourselves. Fine. So that's the end of chapter six. So now the men of Anshi Yarim came. Yalu et Aron Hashem, and they brought up the Aron of Hashem. Yaviuoto, and they brought it El Beit Avinadav Begivah. They brought it to the house of Avinadav in Givah. Yet Elazar ben No Kidshu Kidshu, and Elazar his son sanctified. Okay, it's interesting. Was was uh, it's really sanctified? They translate designated. Okay, was well, sanctified. Okay, the uh, Shmor et Aron Hashem to guard the Aron of Hashem. So they gained that from Rashi. Kitshu means Zeminu, which was appointed. Okay, so they appointed this kid to to guard it. And uh, I should say that something. It's Elazar, the son of. Avi Nadav. Okay. So uh, Malv explains. Everybody came out to honor it. Unlike before. Remember before they saw it. And they just. They were working and they saw it. And they said okay fine the ark is here. So they came to. Uh, they, they all went out to honor it. They brought it to Avi Nadav. So the Radak explains. from ish. There was another man that was named. Avi Nadav. Uh, therefore, Beir Shazeh Ya Yehonadav Shadav Givah. So they they explained this was Yehonadav who lived in Givah. Vagami Yishlomark Yehonadav Hayu Lo Shnei Batim. And there are those who say that he had two homes, Bishnei Mekomot, and two places. Therefore, Beir Shal Aron Hu Va El Beit Hashaya Begivah. And that's why they said he had it in. Uh, they brought to where he lived in Givah. So Kidshu. And that, again, uh, Melbourne says his minu, they appointed him. Mavura Edsli Kigeda Kedusha Mora Hasmana. He explains that he's learned that Kedusha is taught by appointment. In other words, I, the only way to really have Kedusha is to set myself up for it. I have to prepare, prepare myself for it. Okay, he uh, ham a forest we call asakav el devar miuchad, which means what I separate myself or a person separates himself from all the other deeds to one particular thing. That's why in the Hebrew, and again in the English it says designated, designated, right? When I designate something, I remove it from the other things, and I only say it's for this particular thing. That's kidshu. So when I want to be makadesh myself. The Shamayim, this is a Musa already. If I want to be Makadish, if I want to sanctify myself for God, it means I must remove myself from all other things and just work on that. Mm. Which may be why people will go to the, you know, the old stories of the ascetics oh. who will go to the top of the mountain and want to rid themselves of all these 
worldly things that they have to put up with. And uh, <laughs> and here, you got it. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, you saw it. Okay. Fine. So the uh, to set it up and uh, right to sanctify the person. So by the way, this also maybe I'm not sure if it is. Uh, Billy, maybe you can pipe it on this one. It, that may be where they get the concept of the priest has to be separate. That in other words, the Roman Catholic it can't uh, can't get married. Why? Because he's kodesh, quote unquote kodesh. He's sanctified from the rest of the people, and he's only designated for that one thing. Would that make sense? That may be where they're getting this con. Uh, it's a wrong. It's corrupted, but it's uh, that may be where they get that concept that the priest can't do anything else but take care of his flock. And if he would be split up from his family, uh, if he would have a family, then he would be, uh, he wouldn't be designated per se. Again, it's corrupted, it's a corruption of the, uh, we obviously don't hold that, but that may be, I'm just, you know, speaking out loud to thousands and millions of people who listen to me on Facebook, <laughs> but, uh, on YouTube, but it's uh, maybe where they come from, that, where it comes from. What? Sim, uh, four sima? Thank you. Okay. Uh, so yeah, vayhi and it was miyom shevet aron bekirat yarim, and it was from the day that the aron remained or rested in kirat yarim, vayirbu hayamim, and the days were many. Vayu eshim shana altogether twenty years. Vani chukol beit yisrael acharei Hashem, and all of the people were drawn after Hashem. So it's staying in Kiryat Ya'arim for a good 20 years. That's what we're hearing. And so Rashi says, V'ra'u ha'parinyot sheba'a le'em ba'avon bet eili. They saw the tribulations that came upon them because of the sins of the house of Eli. We had a gevor she'asta kadosh baruch hu polishtim and also the strength that Hashem demonstrated against the Palishtim, V'yenehu achare Hashem, so they, again, they were drawn after Hashem, Aide Shmuel, via Shmuel, Shai Machazir Meir Leir, who would go from city to city, Uveshoftam, and he would judge them, Umechicham, and he would reproof them, in other words, he would, how do you say reproof, he would, um, tell them off, Correct. Tell them off. However you want to put that. Give them Muslim mm -hmm. uh, rebuke. Uh, rebuke. Okay. Venehu is lashon hamshacha. So Yenehu is the language of drawing, of drawing forth, and it's an Aramaic word. Fine. Okay. And uh, so it says, "Ein behem to el the moshcham el atov." Okay. Menachem. This is the uh, Rashi suddenly went on to a whole grammatical. Definition of the word, but it means to be drawn after. Okay. So the Malbim then says, uh, Be'ir explains, Shushevet Ha'aron Be'beit Avinadav, from the time that the Aaron came to rest at the house of Avinadav, Hidchem Yom Shevet Ha'aron Kirit Ya'arim, that's what, uh, so, that we hit me the Shev Makomahu, and so it continued to remain there uh, for many uh, years, which be 20 Shehem Yud Aleph Shel Shmuel, which was the 11 years of Shmuel, Shanim Shel Shaul, two years of Shaul, so that's already uh, 13, uh, that's 11 and 2 is thir uh, 13, go ahead and count, okay? Veshiva Shanim, and then seven years Shemalach David Bechevron, which would be 20 years, am I, am I adding it right? 20 years, right? So 11 from Shmuel, 2 from Shaul, and 7 from da uh, David. Mm -hmm. That's how long it remained there. Rosh Lemo, Shagam Sha'avru, Itim Shonim, Uman Higim, Echlifem, Vechol Zer, Lozav, and Komo. You want to say that with all the different times that are passing, all the different uh, leaders that have been changing with all this, it still didn't move. It's what we call the Oedipus uh, 
problem. You have a you build a shoal in the wrong area and you leave it there. <laughs> the community moves around and but no, the shoal remains where it is, okay? So, edifice. I should say edifice. 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 Sorry. Edifice. I was going the I was going with the, the other one. It's a joke on edifice. Yeah. Right. It's the edifice problem. That when you uh, build it, the whole thing is every Jewish community built the shul in the old area. Oh, when it was when they first settled. Oh, right. But they never want to remain there because that's where the immigrants or whatever the, the, the low income was. So as they would get jobs, yeah. they would become more affluent and move to the suburbs. Yeah, yeah. Well, the problem was they can move, but the shul can't move. So they, but they would go to the shul when they went for the events, whatever, they would drive. I mean, that was the, the problem. And so they would say, well, you know, why? And therefore, by the way, the whole area around the shul would be become non-Jewish because everybody else would be there. So the shul would be, but the, the community would not. So they call that the edifice complex where they can't get rid of the building because they have such ties to it because my, my grandmother's mother prayed there, so how, we have to leave it. And even though there's nobody left in the area. No. That's what you call it an edifice complex. <laughs> that, that, huh? They go eventually. They go eventually. Uh, a long, there, long time later. Yeah, there's a lot long of time. churches. Right. Yeah, I think it takes a very long yeah. time. Yeah. There was a case, I mean, I don't want to get lost in this, but there was a case in Boston that was uh, the Shoal had nobody left except for one old man. Oh. One old man. And he wanted to sell it because he wanted to retire. For, he was a Shabbos, I guess. He wanted to sell it. It was right in the heart of Boston, too. And when he was, and he had the seal, sale clinched, basically. Then some people heard about it because you have to sell, you just have to send the letter out to whatever members are left. Oh. And so, and nobody ever came. It was an empty show. Oh. So what happened was they saw they were going to sell it and they said, chutzpah, how dare you? <laughs> and they, they, they uh, went to court. Oh. to turn it into an historical site, oh. which, <laughs> forget that, that. You know, and the city or state would take it over? Or? No, but you can't do anything with it. Oh. You can't do anything with it. And they did that, and he said, but you don't come! <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> Somebody has to pay for this. Oh. Oh. Tough oh. luck. It's, I think it's still there today, it, but it's empty. It's foolishness. Okay. Yeah. I remember the case. Like I said, I, maybe they do use it today, but uh, from what I remember, nobody said, but that, that's what you call an edifice complex, where you, you can't knock it down. <laughs> and I imagine, though, if shoals would be as mobile as a mass unit, uh, it, in order to community moves, so the shoal also moves. That's why, by the way, in New York, you have what's called Stiebel, the Stiebelach, where you have, it's a house that they just, you know, the house moves from here to here to there, and wherever the community is, that's you put their stable. Period. You don't. You don't. There's no. You're not married to the building, ah. and that's the right way to do it. Okay. Mm. Uh, but try to convince people, right? So who called Beit Shel Achri Hashem? And like I said, they were drawn after Kirau Gadol Kedushat Haron because they saw the the great sanctification, the great sanctity of the Aaron, the Chinat on the Erev, Nathan says, and so it was also given to the ones who fear Hashem. Fine. So that's why they were drawn after. So Shmuel said to Allah, uh, the people of Israel, Lemur, saying, If with all of your heart, you will return to Hashem. Remove the foreign gods from your midst, and what are they? The Ashtarot and the Ashtarot. Those are the uh, names of the foreign, some of the foreign gods. And prepare your heart to Hashem. And serve Him alone. And you will be saved. Uh, he will save you from the hands of the Polishtim. So. You have, uh, it's an interesting thing that he's saying, remove the foreign gods. Where, why would they have a foreign god to begin with? Here it says they were drawn after Hashem. 
So, and serve him alone. Why do, why do you have to say serve him alone? Why just not say serve him? Huh. So, the huh. Mesut of David says, below Shituf, you serve him alone without a partner. Most people had no problem, believe, like Pharaoh, had no problem believing that God was God. But he said, but there's a compa- uh, whole bunch of gods. What do you call that? A compendium. You call it a compendium? Pantheon. Pantheon. There's a pantheon of gods. Mm. So there's one. So we have partners here. Okay. The, by the way, again, if you go for what's dualism, that's what called dualism, when you have two gods, good and bad, yeah? Or the Trinity, the Trinity, again, three parts of God. So all these things, different things, people, most Christians will say there's only one God, but he has uh, follows on the Holy Ghost. And so, again, that's, you can't do that. One God only. One, there's no partnerships here. So, um, so the Masu's Dove explains, Vayomer, and Shmuel saying, Shmuel Again, once, now, once the people being drawn after Hashem, apparently they weren't totally there, so they, but they had woken him up. So now is his, ch- now is Shmuel's ch- uh, chance to cause him to do tshuva. He says, it with all your heart. That if you do a complete tshuva, a total un- a turnaround, then that will be what uh, cleanses you and purifies you. Which means you'll return, regret, and abandon the deeds that you did before and you will do and they will do good and not bad in the future and you need to both you have to have both thought and action for this he says regarding the abandoning of the thought of bad thoughts remove from yourself the foreign gods from your midst. <coughs> that is in the hidden parts of your heart. Okay. And when it comes to the actually doing it, you have to remove ha'ashtarot. So not only do you have to get rid of your idols, but you have to get rid of the concept that there's a partnership. Now, again, it's hard for us yeah. to imagine this. Because we don't really deal with partnership gods. I don't think we do anyway. I don't really think that's part of our culture these days. Again, I'm kicking out Roman Catholic, well, whoever believes in Trinity. Trinity. But it's, uh, I don't know if we have this concept anymore of, certainly amongst Jews, we haven't thought about it for uh, thousands of years. So I think it's very foreign to us. But it's... Uh, but that's what he was saying. You have to have that. You have to wipe that out from the inner inner of your heart, and also abandon the actual idol. The and it's corresponding to the future uh, service. which is the, again the hidden service. Omer You have to prepare your heart for Hashem. Hashem. Your heart has to be prepared only for Hashem. You have to wipe out all, you should not have any uh, other thoughts mixed in with it. And corresponding to this in actuality. Serve him alone, below Shituf, without any partnership. And with this, if you do this, then Hashem will save you from the hands of the police that are ruling over you for the reasons of your sins. In other words, you want to know why the police are ruling over us? Well, it's very simple. Because you have sins. Oh, you're going to tell me, I don't have any asteroid. I got rid of them. Yeah, but you still believe in them. You're still holding them in your heart. The only thing that we can get close to here, by the way, is what the Bali Musra is always telling us. That we put our hope in something else. Yes, we have trust in Hashem, we have betachem, but I have to give God some help. <laughs> right? I have to help God. God helps, what's the expression? God, help, God helps those who help themselves. Right? So we convince ourselves, based upon that, I don't know where it comes from. That's uh, huh? Where does it come from? Do you know offhand? God helps those who help themselves? I'm not sure who said it. 
but it's uh, I'm not sure if it's biblical or if it's, if it's uh, Benjamin Franklin. Something Franklin. Okay, here we go. Google, Rev. Google will know. <laughs> so when you find out, tell me. God helps those who help themselves. But the bottom line is, by saying that, it makes me go to work. It makes me put faith in you, the employer. Okay, and I say, well, I, I went to work. Hashem, I understand. Look, I'm helping you help me, right? <laughs> then that's wrong. I have to put all of my faith in Hashem. Should I go to work? Yeah, Hashem said, Ula Abdel, Ula Shamra, no problem. I have to serve, I have to work, and I have to uh, serve. Guard. Does it say? Originates in ancient Greece. Oh, yeah? Aesop's Fables. Aesop's Fables, there you go. Oh, really? And commonly attributed to Benjamin Franklin. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> the, the modern English wording appears Okay, so there you go. Aesop's favorite is Greek. So it makes sense to Greeks to say <laughs> Just the world outlook when this was written. Israel is the only place where they believe in one God. Yes. Everything around them. Mm. Everybody else. Correct, correct. All thought mm. is of multiple thought. Correct, correct. So, but that's what, what he's trying to get out. And but like I said, today, the closest we'll get to that is my putting faith into the stock market, my putting faith into my employer, my putting faith into something else because I think I need to help God help me because of God helps those who help themselves. Ask any Jew, they'll tell you. That, that's, uh, I think any person will give that line. God helps those who help themselves. But it's, I don't know if, I'm not, I'm not sure it's necessarily Jewish. I know we all have been convinced with that, but it seems to be that this is arguing that. Try, try first thyself and after calling God for to the worker God himself lends aid. Who's that? That's from uh, some Aesop Vader. Okay, there you go. Okay. If you, if you hit Proverbs, I'm in trouble. Apparently <laughs> <laughs> it's in Proverbs. Okay. So now let's go on. Uh, yeah. So Vayomer, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dalit. So Vayasiru Bnei Yisrael. So Bnei Yisrael removed Et Baalim Et Asherot, the Baalim, which was the, would be the male part of that God, and the Asherot, which would be the female part of that God. Vyavdu Et Hashem Levado, and they served Hashem alone. So it says Vayasiru. Uh, uh, oh. All right. For Yeshua, uh, save from Ki Malu Acharei Hashem. It tells that they they filled their hearts after Hashem. Bein Petshuva, whether it's in the uh, Truva of the past, uh, uh, I mean, in the actuality, or even in thought. For Yeshua, Bein Avod Ba'atid, and that's why it says they went for the future here. We have do it Hashem Levado. V'lo He give me the Vara Machshava. But oh, I'm sorry. It tells in in. Uh, He's changing it. All we hear is that they removed in in action. They removed their gods, and they served God alone. But Malbim points out, "Vloi, give me the var hachmachshava." But does not say anything about what they thought. Ula avod ula davar elokim, or the service to to God. Shami palel ba adam achreshishavu el Hashem. And there he prayed on their behalf that they would go after Hashem. If you look at the Pasuk again, it's interesting. It says, They removed the, the gods, but it doesn't say anything about what, you know, what their thought was. So he says, he on their behalf. And that's what next one. Vayomer Shmuel. So Shmuel said, Kipsuet called Yisrael Hamitz Pata. And so Shmuel gathered all of uh, ben Israel to Mitzpah again. Mitzpata is the, the toward, I mean, law. Okay, that takes the place of the Lamed. So, because it really just is Mitzpah, that's the name of the place. Yeah. Because it has the hey, Mitzpah, it turns into the Toph, and then you have the hey. So, uh, so gather everybody to gather everybody to Mitzpah, it's a command form. Vet Palel Ba'adchem, and I will pray on your behalf, El Hashem, to Hashem. So, he says, because. Uh, 
So yeah, that's oh. Beomer he says. So Malbim says. Achare hachanazot. After this preparation, Amar he said. She had come to a mitzvah. They they should gather to mitzvah. Shasham hayah darkam la to save the kedusha because that is where they would gather to uh, to for the kedusha and for the service and to to the word of Hashem. Shami palel and that's where. Uh, uh, he's going to reach, uh, to Davin on their behalf to return to Hashem. So what happened? They gathered to Mitzvah. Told them to gather, they gathered. And they drew water. And they poured it before Hashem. Uh, they poured before Hashem. And they fasted on that day. And they said, We have sinned to Hashem. Shmuel. Israel by mitzvah and uh, Shmuel judged Ben Israel in mitzvah. So you have to ask questions here. What's going on in this pasuk? Again, straight verse. They gathered to mitzvah. They drew water. They poured it before. Hashem, they poured before Hashem. They fasted on that day. Why are they taking water? Why are they pouring it out? You ever think about this? I mean, if I look at the English, what's the English say? Does it explain it without, without any problems? Um, it says, assembled, drew water, poured, well, they put in, mind you, they put in parentheses, poured it out, instead of poured before the Lord. And they, so they're already answering one question, and they fasted on that day, and they said, we have sinned before the Lord. So, but why do they have the water? What are they doing with water? Why are they pouring it out? Why are they fasting? All those questions. So, uh, Rashi says, "Vishafichu live home b'ti b'ti yufta k'maya kadam Hashem." They fa- <laughs> I love when Rashi uses Aramaic. He, he says, oh. "The Targum Yonason says <laughs> he didn't discuss it." So he said, uh, "They pour out the water into shuva be, uh, like uh, like water before Hashem. They pour it out their hearts. I'm sorry, into shuva like water before Hashem. So now the water becomes symbolic. Lefi mashmon according to the." Uh, to the implication, in this is according to Yonatan, this is only a showing humility. That we are like the water that we poured up before you, and then he judged, Shmuel judged the people, between man and his friend, on the matters of money that between them, or on the matters of Nevera. A sin that they transgress. So he's having a busy, busy day. Malbim explains. Vayikpitzu sefer sefer explains one. Shetik shehit kapsu that they gathered with their mora al haachdut, and this demonstrates or teaches about the unity, their unity, lavod el Hashem. Uh, that they were going to uh, serve Hashem alone. So they poured water. With their, the tears that they had, that was the, uh, they poured the water with the tears. Okay. Or it's hinting that they poured out their hearts like water. And then they fasted. When a person fasts, he's searching after his individual sins, and then also of the of the communal sins. And to separate from them. Rather than to fast. Then the other problems, Vayom Rusham Khatanu, and then they said we we have sinned. Shehu Havidoi, this is the confession, via Kharata, and the regret on these sins that were between man and Hashem, and also between the sins between man and his friend. Uh, because through the Sha'al Zeh Emol Shuva Levad, and between man and his friend, to Shuva is not enough. That's why you have to have Shmuel judging the cases. Okay, when it comes to me apologizing to God and and having uh, doing tshuva, I don't need anybody else. When it comes to me having a problem with you, 
then I have to have, we have to go to the court. We have to get a judge, because I can't just say, I spoke Lashon Hara about Reuven. Oh, I'm sorry. Doesn't work. I have to go to Reuven. And I have to go to Reuven. Hey, Reuven, I said blank about you. Okay, and then he has to forgive me. Or, he, well, if he's a nice guy, he'll forgive me. Or I took your spade, and here's your spade back. I'm sorry for stealing it. Sorry for barring it uh, without your permission. However, if you want to look at that, those words. Yeah. Okay? And uh, with that, you would need Shmuel for. Okay, that's why I said he, he judged. Okay. Uh, so, Vishmu polished him. Now what happened was... The Plishtim heard all this. Now, I want you to just think of the scene. All the Jews are gathered to Mitzpah. That's however many there are. They're all gathering to one place. They are under, they're subjugated by the Plishtim. Right? But now they're all gathering to South Bend. <laughs> all, all the people. What, what should Plishtim think? Rebellion. Vishma polished him, so the Plishtim thought, uh, heard ki kapsu El Mitzpata, that all of Benesha El gathered to Mitzpah. He had the Sarnay polished El Israel. So now the officers of the Plishtim uh, went up to Israel. Vishma Benesha El, and Benesha El heard Viru Mipnea Plishtim. So now the the the, the Benesha El heard. And they were afraid because of the Plishtim. So the Plishtim heard that they gathered. They're coming out. The Jews here, they're coming. Now they're afraid. Okay. Oh. Oh. So, so Rashi, uh, Malbim explains, Vishmu Zeh Yasiba Me'ed Hashem. This was brought about by Hashem. She had Garubam Plishtim Lema'an Yeplu Adam that the Plishtim would gather together to fight them in order that they would fall into the hands. So therefore, when they heard that they gathered, uh, they thought, like you said, uh, there's going to be a rebellion. So the officers or the leaders of the Plishtim came up with their camps. And the, the Israelites that did not understand they did not understand this was a direct result from Hashem. In order, in order that God would save them. They became afraid of them, of the Plishtim. Okay? And again, you have to think about how everything is going down here. B'nai Yisrael, like I said, B'nai Yisrael came together to do tshuva. And Shmuel's giving them a bracha. But that was all because Hashem wanted this to happen, so the Plishtim would hear that all B'nai Yisrael would get together. So they started getting up their armies. Well, B'nai Yisrael, the reason he did that was so that B'nai Yisrael would be saved in one twelve fell swoop. Well, now B'nai Yisrael see this, and they're afraid because their subjugators are coming to get them. What should, now, the question is, what should they do? Before we go on, what should they do right away? If you're afraid, what should you do? Pray. Davin, and what else? Um, like, realistically, or in the case of like, where, where God has involved? Like, realistically, I'm dealing only with realistically. Okay. If, if you, you get, what? Get ready for battle. Wrong. <laughs> get Shmuel. Get Shmuel. Uh, Say, Shmuel, what's going on here? We did Shuva. Can you imagine if I. Millions upon millions of people are listening right now. Well, they will be listening when I put this on. Millions upon millions in countries throughout the world, thanks to YouTube, will be have the ability to watch this. And if they just listen to my words, follow God, do tshuva. All the Jews throughout the world, do tshuva right now. Right now, don't wait. Don't wait until tomorrow. Right now, do tshuva. Keep Shabbos. In two Shabbatot, if we keep two Shabbatot, the rabbis tell us, in a row, okay, Mashiach will be here. We'll be through. <laughs> it's over. We're, game over. We beat you. Okay? We, we came back to God, and that's it. We, no, no, no games. Are, uh, Palestinians will lay down their arms. <laughs> the, everybody will see us as who we really are, the chosen of Hashem. And we'll be able to go back to Ashishol. All our synagogues will be flying through the air. However, the Gemara wants to see this. 
The bottom line is, on the wings of eagles, we will be brought back to Israel and we will live in peace. Two weeks. Right? Two weeks. Now let's... Let's wait. Eight let's days. go over that two weeks. What? Eight days. No, two Oh, <laughs> in Achinami. Two Shabbatot. Eight days. In eight days. Here you go. The, 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 the true accountant here. Okay. In eight days, we could be back in Eretz Israel living the good life. Milk, a uh, land of flowing with milk and honey. And for what? For making a kiddish? Eating some challah? and relaxing and going to services and not doing anything to break Shabbos. It's really not hard. It's the easiest thing in the world. For two weeks. Prove it, prove God wrong. Prove religion wrong. By the way, if you aren't really prove religion wrong, that's all these atheists who are running around, all these people. No. Keep two Shabbatot. And if it doesn't happen, it's all a lie. Simple. It's all a lie. Okay? So now, that happens. Now what happens? He did it the first week. And say, oh, we did it, we did it. We're, we're, there, we're there, we're there. And then something happens. Somebody decides to break Shabbos. Because I said, I, I, don't, I didn't like the first Shabbos. Well, people, you know, it's crazy. Why would you do that? But so we're all going to get scared. Or if somebody says, or they're coming to the next Shabbos, and what happens? We hear some demonic leader say, I'm going to bomb you wherever you are. Huh. Oh, now we become afraid and we all have to start protecting ourselves and we're going to break Shabbos because of that. Would you do that? Or would you say to your leader, but you said, Rabbi Neville, <laughs> that if you just follow, I'm the leader now, okay, if you just follow two Shabbatot, now we're nearly there, we'll, we'll, we'll think about it, but you know, you got to help me out, right? It, they should certainly dive into Hashem, but go back to your leader too, right? Why should I get ready? Because if you're really going to attack me, I can't do anything. Now let's see what happens. So, Vayomru Bnei Yisrael El Shmuel. Oh, there you go. So, Bnei Yisrael said to Shmuel, Al Tacharei Shimenu. Don't be silent. How do they translate this? Uh, don't be, don't be silent. Is that what they said? Cease not to cry. Cease not. To, don't be silent. Right. Okay. Uh, don't be silent from us, Mizaok El Hashem Elokeinu, to cry to Hashem your God. Biyoshi Enemy out of Pelishim and let him save us from the hands of Pelishim. Okay, so they said, it's interesting. They come to him and say, you're the one that got us into this. <laughs> <laughs> you cry out. No. You made us a promise. You talk to God. No. Okay, it's like when you guys are in trouble. Who do you send to go to your father? <laughs> do all three of you go and, say, and have harata? <laughs> all four of you go and have harata? Or do you have regret? Or do you pick a representative <laughs> to take it? Okay? Is that again? They, you never get into trouble, right? <laughs> they, they never get into trouble. But that would be the question. What do you do? Do you pick the favorite <laughs> they picked the favorite uh, child who, who you perceived. In other words, if you were Joseph, if you were Joseph, the, the, uh, the 12 tribes, and you were getting into trouble, who would you send to dad, to Yaakov, to get you out of the problem? Yosef! <laughs> so that would push it. You wouldn't send Reuven, because he got in trouble with Bila. You wouldn't send Yehuda, because he was with Tamar. You're not going to send Shimon Levi. They, they ransacked the city. Right, the other Bnei Fachot, forget it. Okay, they're out too. Yisachar Zavulin, Yisachar's learning Torah. Zavulin's out, it's not working. Okay, so who am I going to send? So, so here he says, you send Shmuel. Oh. I mean, Shmuel, go, go and do this. You got to protect us here. <laughs> so what happens? Vayo, uh, so that seems to be what's going on. So it says, Vayomer of Melbourne says. Uh, we'll have to stop with this one. When they saw that Shmuel was certain in Hashem, they were certain uh, that he would strengthen himself, he would strengthen them, sorry, because uh, he was certain that Hashem had already heard his prayer. So they said to him, Don't be quiet now. Come and tell me so, okay, Hashem, from crying out to Hashem. Because he is one who's going to save us from the hands of pollution, much more. Kashi, you're Anu. 
Now that we are afraid of him, uh, for for the, which is good for us, that he should be good for us. Who Oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. I knew something was going on there. Uh, again, let's try that again. Uh, just as we are afraid of them, it's going to be impossible for us to defeat them in war. So therefore, you need to pray that this whole Teshua, this whole uh, salvation comes via Hashem because my sword, they're telling him, my sword won't save me. There's too many of them, too few of us. We can't do it. You made us a promise. Deliver. It's an interesting statement they're doing. Okay, we'll have to stop there.